Hello and welcome to this video where I'll show you how you can program the firmware for an analog to digital converter. In this video series I'm going to be programming the SAM3X microcontroller. This is found on the Arduino Do. At the end of the video I'll show an application where we read from our ADC and write to a digital to analog converter or DAC. Let's get started with how we can initialize the ADC. We're going to use three lines of code to do this. When we are working directly with the ADC, we are using registers of the microcontroller processor. To communicate with the ADC, we're going to use pointers, and we need to assign values to the registers. These first three registers are the mode register, the control register, and the channel enable register. We're going to tell the ADC how to behave, that it should be enabled, and what channel we want to use. Let's begin with the mode register. When working with these registers, we're going to have to be comfortable with lower level instructions. This means that we need to understand logic operations and we're going to have to be familiar with hexadecimal values. In the first line in the initialization, we set the ADC mode register to a hexadecimal 80. We're using an OR equal assignment. What this does is preserves the previous value at the mode register, but then updates it for any new selected value. For example, if A equals 1001 zero, zero, one, and we OR equal with 1100 zero, zero, and we print the result, we get A equals 1101. One. Let's go back to the code. The 0x prefix for this number just signifies that this is a hexadecimal value. Each of the numbers here, 8 and 0, signify 4 bits of information. 8 corresponds to 1000 zero, 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 and 0 corresponds to 0000. zero, zero, zero. What we're doing in this first initialization line of code is to preserve what was in the mode register but make sure that we're setting the mode to free running. This is done by setting it to the hexadecimal value of 80. To find out more information about the mode register, we can refer to the datasheet. For the SAM3X microcontroller, there's a section in the datasheet called Analog to Digital Converter User Interface. This section lays out what the registers are, where they're located, and how we can use them. Registers are just places in memory on the microcontroller processor. So in order to access those memory locations, this table gives us a user interface and tells us where we can go to set these values. We are interested right now in the mode register. The SAM3X microcontroller is a 32-bit architecture device. This means that the registers will have 32 bits of information. The mode register gives us different options. We could put the ADC to sleep. We can determine if we want to sample at 10 bits or 12 bits. In our case, we're just looking to set the free run value. This is how the 80 translates to each bit in this register. There are also subtables that tell us what we're actually setting when we're assigning the register different values. So for the free running mode, zero is off, which means that the ADC is in normal mode. When we set free run to one, we're turning it on, and in free running mode, we do not wait for any trigger. Next, we need to set the control register. This time, we're just assigning a value. We're assigning hexadecimal zero two. By setting the ADC control register to hexadecimal two, we're starting the conversion. Notice that not all the bit fields in this register are utilized, only the first two. Setting this bit allows us to start converting analog values to digital. The last initialization step is to select what ADC channel we're going to be using. This particular microcontroller has multiple ADC channels, and we only want to select a single one. 
The channel you select depends on your pinout. And because this microcontroller is on an Arduino board, that has been determined for me. So the ADC pin A0 on the Arduino Do corresponds to the seventh channel of the ADC. To select this channel, I need to set the ADC channel enable register to hexadecimal 80. By setting the channel to 1, we enable it. These three commands set up the ADC. This is a very direct method of setting it up. We use registers, which map functionality to the hardware. It's very convenient to use Arduino boards because they have a lot of software that's developed on these lower level commands. We don't always need to get access to the lower level commands and do this direct method. For example, for the DAC, I'm just going to use one shorthand command. I'm going to write one value and this will take care of the initialization of it. Typically, the Arduino built-in functions are very robust. You won't get a lot of errors with them. However, they are not optimized for speed. For my application, I'm going to be inputting audio signals. So I need to quickly sample data points and then output them through the DAC, the digital to analog converter. Arduino has some built-in functions to sample the ADC, but they have a lot of overhead. It takes a lot of time and I'm not able to get the signal resolution that I need. So going to the lower level commands allows me to do this. Two lines of code allow us to sample the ADC. The first line of code is the while statement. There are really two conditional logic statements within this. What we do is we check if there's a data point ready, and if we don't, then we wait. Reading from left to right inside the while loop, we first have an ADC pointer. Then we check the interrupt status register. The interrupt status register allows us to know when the ADC has completed a conversion because it takes some time for the ADC to actually arrive at a data point. We do a logic AND with the interrupt status register to see if our ADC has converted the specific channel that we're looking at. In our case, it's channel 7. The inner parentheses statement keeps track of whether we have a valid data point if we have a data point that has been converted by the ADC that is ready to go. Outside the first set of parentheses is a not equal statement and we compare it to the channel that we're looking at which is 8-0. Put simply if we do not have a data point ready for the ADC we wait until we have one and then we move on. This is a simple one line statement that waits until a point has been converted from the ADC. The next line of code is my variable that I'm assigning to the ADC channel data register. This is where the actual data point resides that the ADC collected. This is a read-only register inside the ADC and corresponds only to channels that are enabled. Notice that inside the brackets is the number 7. This corresponds to the channel 7 of the ADC. The last two lines of code are very similar to what we did with the ADC, however we're going to do it with the digital to analog converter, the DAC. The SAM3X microcontroller has two digital to analog converters, so we need to select the right one and then write the data point to it. Notice that the last line of code in this void loop is the DAC-C underbore write underbar conversion underbar data. D a C C stands for digital to analog converter controller write conversion data. The second input parameter to that function is n underbar ADC0. This is our data point that we collected from the ADC. Now let's look at the results. Here is the output when the input frequency is 100 hertz and it's a 1.5 volt peak-to-peak -peak sine wave. Notice that this is a clean waveform. We have to increase the resolution of the oscilloscope to see the stair step like digital to analog converter steps, which of course go up and down 
based upon what the input signal is. We see that when we approach 40 kilohertz, we move away from creating the ideal input signal, which is a sine wave, and have more of a discrete stair step waveform. The end application is audio frequencies. So there probably will be signal distortion in the higher end of the audio band. We would not want to have a distorted waveform like we do at 40 kilohertz if we just want to reproduce an audio signal and for example amplify it or change it. The more instructions processing and overhead accounted for when taking data points will impact the maximum amount of output frequency of the digital to analog converter. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned more about how to program an analog to digital converter, how to read the data sheets, and understand that in certain applications speed is very important. That's why we might be inclined to go to lower level commands. Stay tuned for more on this topic and let me know what you think in the comments section.